I uh, discuss autopsy um, with all of my caregivers and some of my patients too, and some of them bring it up, but for the most part I bring it up. And uh, right from the beginning, we talk about it, and um, you know, I ask if they've thought about autopsy at all, what their thoughts are, if they had any questions about it. And we kind of have an open dialogue, and I find bringing it up at the beginning, where the symptoms are mild, it's not um, something that's you know, immediate, that uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, concern that something is going to happen right away. Uh, so we can kind of start the dialogue about autopsy and, and dispel some of the myths associated with that right up front. Um, I've heard several uh, things uh, about autopsy that just aren't, aren't true. You know, some people have thought that we cut people's heads off, and, you know, things like that. And, uh, you know, and I try to set the record straight that that's not what happens, and, and it's very civilized and a very small incision, and, you know, it's not noticeable. And, uh, any service that's wanted uh, can, can occur, and, and, and it's the very the respectful. The benefits of having that diagnosis, that's right. it gives a closure, right. it contributes to research, mm -hmm. uh, and it especially as, ge as genetic factors or other factors become available, you, it's more and more important actually to have that, that final definite diagnosis, and then to even to contribute, to feel that you're actually contributing to that discovery process. I have called uh, every one of our patients that has come to autopsy, you know, I um, talked to them obviously beforehand and then I, I talked to many of them afterwards and I've asked them, you know, what, what did you, th you know, was this helpful? Mm -hmm. And many of them have said, you know, I wasn't sure at first, <laughs> but you know, we've been doing this for so long or some of them are absolutely, there's no question, you know, you get different, mm -hmm. you know, opinions of course. But the ones that weren't so sure at first, uh, I'm particularly, you know, curious about what was it that changed their mind or made them feel like, yeah, this was a good thing. And, and oftentimes they decided that they really wanted to know for their children or what if in the future we do have a cure or a treatment and there's some you know, thing that, you know, some, some tests where if you have any kind of, you know, biologic or uh, susceptibility or predisposition that's genetic, you know, this is going to be the information that they are going to need. That was one reason that many of them have given me. And then uh, another really has been, you know, we went through so much. We've been followed for so many years with the study. And to be honest with you, I just really needed to know. <laughs> And that, that often was the case, too, that people really wanted to know. And, uh, and you're, you know, for the most part, we're right. Very high. That, that, Very it, high that we, you high know, if we diagnose Lewy body, with the Lewy body dementia, we're, we're uh, I think we're 98% of the time correct. Yeah, in, in fact, Ho it's however actually, it has improved. Uh, uh, <laughs> it used to be that probably less than 50% of, of patients would get correct diagnoses. Right. But it, it especially in the context of your longitudinal study, um, the diagnostic accuracy rate is very high. And I think that's, the goal is to, to achieve that kind of accuracy in the general uh, population. Sure. Neurologists are slowly but surely becoming aware of this disorder and starting to recognize it and starting sure. to diagnose it. Uh, but it's still, an, it's, it's still under-recognized. Having said that, there have been some cases where, frankly, we were wrong. And I think it has been helpful for the family to know that. And, and what was it mm -hmm. about the situation or the symptoms that, that made the diagnosis and th going incorrect? Back then you looking know. at those, they, they differed in right. some way and from the, from the, the typical and patient. And I think in that sense, I think for uh, uh, the autopsy diagnosis for the family, uh, you mentioned closure, and I do think that's a part of closure, but just knowing mm -hmm. what is it that you know, your loved one had, really. Um, I, I think it's very helpful for patients, for family members, to really get that information, and uh, especially all they've been through. And this is a very challenging disease. It is, uh, all the neurodegenerative conditions are challenging. I don't want to make it sound like one's better than another or, or anything worse. like that, or <laughs> worse than another, anything like that. But, you know, this is the disease we're talking about. and. And, and it, it's difficult, and I think that for families who go through this, and, and, and I think one of the nice things for families, that they've told me they've really appreciated being in the longitudinal study because they felt like they've had support. Um, 
they see us on a you know, yearly basis, they, if they have any questions, they contact us, you know, they, they have that support. They, they know that we're there for them and that we're re you know, reputable and that we're going to give them the information that they need. And then, it, it, you know, when, when the disease has run its course, then they have the answers that they need as well. And, and that it really that tissue is helps really them. valuable for, for future research. And so some of the, the, the modern uh, genome-based studies that are being done, the, the most powerful um, studies uh, that have looked for whole genome-wide mm -hmm. analysis have been based on pathology confirmed diagnoses because of this uncertainty in, in clinical diagnoses. Mm -hmm. And the, um, we are currently actually uh, in the process of uh, uh, co collaborating in a consortium to do a genome-wide association study of Lewy body dementia. Mm -hmm. And the pathologic uh, material that we've acquired through your study will, will be invaluable in terms mm -hmm. of the contribution to those genetic studies. And families will also say that they, they want to be a part of, you know, contributing to helping others in the future. And I will say, the people who have donated their brains and have contributed to autopsies have helped tremendously. It is because of those people that we now know that cholinesterase inhibitors are very helpful, that we now know that certain medications are, are not as helpful. We now, we understand some of the relationships that we didn't understand before because we've been able to look at the autopsy tissue and the relationships between the chemicals that are there in the neurons and, but and also how they relate to each other. The autopsy then improves the, the clinical diagnosis because um, on the cases where it turns out not to be Lewy body dementia, you go back and say, ah, well, these were patients that had fluctuations or hallucinations, mm -hmm. but they didn't occur early. They occurred late, and now we know that that maybe isn't the, the signature of Lewy body dementia. Uh, mm -hmm. And ha d if you didn't have the autopsy, you wouldn't know the, the significance of the temporal relationship mm -hmm. of the, of the uh, clinical mm -hmm. uh, symptoms. Mm -hmm. So it, it is it's very helpful, and we, and we are very, very grateful to our patients and their caregivers, not only for the contribution they make during life, but also for the uh, final, final, final contribution, contribution they make.